Welcome to Minerverse's editor tutorial video. I'm going to show you all the nice stuff which you can do with this awesome tool. It will be really quick because there is a lot of things to show, so I hope you will catch me. But what you see here is something that you should be able to create after completing this tutorial. I hope you like it. So just delete it all and start from the scratch. First thing I'm going to show you is all the prefabs we have here. There is a lot of categories, each for one faction with different textures. So use what you like. And here you can just drag and drop some prefab to the scene. And what you see here, this is the basic structure of the editor. It's called prefab container. And this is the ba uh, it, it defines the borders of the editor. As you can see, you cannot move the prefab behind the borders. And when you press escape, you get to the selection mode, where you can move with the whole structure, rotate with it. And there is a lot of ways how to operate with the prefabs. All of them you can find in the help when you press F1. It's a lot of things, but they are really useful, uh, so I'm not gonna bore with you with these things. And let's proceed to something really interesting. And this is the snap points. When you press P, you will see these white dots. And when you select one of them, there in the list is the prefabs you can connect with it. So just add one of them to the scene and right click to the second snap point and it will snap automatically. You can select another one and create really nice structure in easy way. So you can see, but I think you don't like this and you should, you want to rotate it. You so you can unlink it and click on the right dot and you will see now the r this one pref this one prefab is selected so just press T to rotate and you can rotate around the prefab and then link it again. The nice thing is that all prefabs which are connected are moving together so you do not have to worry you will break your structure and also rotate works. Another nice thing are the lights. You can find them here in the details. And so just place it somewhere where we can see the light. When you press edit object, there is a lot of settings you can set, for example color and some basic things about the light. And here is the mode of the light. As you can see, it's constant flashing or for example random flashing or distant glare, this one is visible from the long distance and you can set also the specular color and there is also the spotlight which is quite different, so just experiment with it sometimes you need one of them, sometimes both and that's all for the lights so let's proceed to another interesting thing which is voxels voxels and asteroids here in the gameplay you can add the asteroid. Here are the basic structures of the asteroids. And if you want to start from the scratch you can use the cube and just remove some voxels to create really unique structures or you can edit one of them. Here is the material. One important thing is that when the name of the material is indestructible uh, it's really indestructible so when you shoot to it nothing happens. So just select one of them and add it to the scene. And as you can see here, you can move with it. And when you press V, you get to the voxel hand mode, where you can add voxels of some certain material. So just click somewhere, or you, you can use bigger size, larger size, and also distance of the voxel hand or you can use different material you can also remove voxels and create some nice structures or soften the voxels which will as you can see there is little difference between it and change the material is really nice good thing is that all the material you can also harvest and when you harvest it you get the material you want or you can just wrinkle the voxels so it doesn't look so smooth 
so you can use also other types of the voxel hand like the box and also cuboid okay so let's start with the particles these are accessible from dummy point here, so just edit to the scene and edit it. You must set its enabled and its particle effect. And here you can set the color of the particle effect or the alpha or the scale. And here you can select the particle what you like. Just experiment with them and you will see what's nice or what's what you like. So for example, leaking biohazard. So it's really nice. And that's for the particles. Another really nice thing are the influence fares. You must set it's enabled and these two values are really important. The minimum value, when you are inside the minimum value, it has the 100% intensity. And when you are in the maximum radius, it's larger and larger as closer you are to the minimum. So for example, set it's a dust and set the color. And now when you enter it, you will see the color of the dust is slightly changing and as I enter the minimum radius it has the maximum intensity. Also you can set the ambient sound so when you enter it you can hear the sound it's really really strange and also you can set the radio activity and you are inside it here there is radioactivity. So that's for the influence fares and let's proceed to something which is called waypoints. I, okay, so here this is the waypoint and you can just copy it and create the ways. And when you select two of them and press Shift G J you will connect them and once they are connected you can select some of them and press shift N and you will create the waypoint path so for example path and when you add spawn point to the scene here you can select the path which you created and the patrol mode which is a cycling or the ping pong which is uh, from start to the end and the back or the one way and here you can add the bot here are some prepared uh, templates of the bots so just edit and you can copy it or delete and when you edit it here you can see the AI template I think the names are kind of understandable so just try them you will see it's really hard to describe them all and here you can set the faction faction is really important because uh, from the faction it's deriving the relationship to the player so for example Chinese are enemy or EAC are the friends so it really matters aggressivity on the C distance this distance sets uh, from which distance they will attack you okay and these two bots define the group and when you set 4 here then in the first spawn this timer sets the first time of the first spawn and in the first spawn there will be two bots spawned and when you destroyed all of them two of them and here the spawning groups is set another two bots will spawn so the large of the group is defined by the, num by the number of bots in this field and when you set not now to spawning groups they will spawn immediately so when I destroy one of them immediately they will spawn another one until the this number is reached in total four boats in the radius you set you can set in which radius they are spawned and respawn this is the respawn time after the destroying one of the bot and as you will see Probably I have the wrong respawn time. Okay. And now you see there are two bots. Radar signal jam. Flying in 
their way, their waypoint path. And you can change it to the cycle. You will see they are moving in the cyclic way. But these spawn points are really specific in the way of the spawning the bots. They are spawned randomly with random direction. And sometimes you want bots which are in the static way. So you can define the bots in the same way like in the spawn point. And the one difference is you can move with them, set the rotation. And this rotation will be stable. So as you can see, it's in the same same rotation as I set it in the editor. So that's for the bots. Let's proceed to the gameplay. Here you can add a security control hub. And when you click edit properties, there is a lot of nice things you can set on it, like the name, if it has health or how much health it has. And really important thing is this field, it, if it does require energy. Energy is really nice. When you have generator in the scene, you can see its range. And when some prefab is inside the range, it gets energy from it and it works. S but if you don't have the generator and you want to use some prefab for the reason, you can set this so it doesn't require energy then. Here you can set if you can use it or hack it and other things. And now when I add the turret to the scene, here you can see its ID. And you can write it just here. And now when I fly to it, I can actually... Where it is? Space and acquire control of the turret. Radar signal I can just turn it off. And you can also connect with the security hub lots of other things like the cameras here. Uh, no, 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 here. Or the generator itself, or the doors, and lots of other things. And when you are using the hub, you can turn and turn them off or acquire their control and so on. Another really important thing is the faction of the container. When you are in the selection mode you can press edit properties and set the faction of the container and it's the same like with the bot so when it has China faction all the prefabs inside the container are enemy to me so they will have red hood marker, hat marker and also turrets will shoot on me so Enemy alert. As you can see, the turret, which was uh, neutral, is now the enemy and it's shooting on me. But is it good if I would be here? Okay. And you can also set the searching distance of the turret. This defines how far it will shoot on you and also if it's active, which is the reason why it was not shooting on me right now. But So, another nice thing are the vendors. These can be found in the details here. And first you must set the right faction. It must be something neutral like trade and transport. And when you select the vendor and press F5, here you can set, for example, its army. And when I will fly to it, I will see it here. When I press E, I can actually try it with it. You have no... Ah, okay. And also cargo box is good thing. When you add cargo box, 
you can set its type here for example oxygen and when you press F5 you can just add it at the oxygen kit and then when I will fly to it I can just press, press space and get the oxygen okay. and that's for the gameplay objects and let's proceed to the general settings uh, you can add the starting point of the player and of the mothership just at the dummy point and here you can set the player start it's already defined so just click yes and delete the first one and then you can redefine it and you can also set the mothership start and then both of them will spawn on the same place or you can set the different place for it so just at another dummy point and set the mothership start also you can add to the safe area which is also dummy point and here you can set the radius and it's enabled and now when you have the safe area here you can be sure that inside the safe area no generated objects will be generated so for example static asteroids around the map or the debris field nothing will be here inside the safe area and also here there are visibility options so if you are kinda confused from the things you are you have in the editor you can just disable them as you can see now I don't see any prefabs or voxels and lots of other things here to set. just experiment with them and you will see it's really useful tool and another nice nice tool is the copy tool here you can just write a sector name like this one and here you will see the objects inside the sector and when you select one of them and add them you can see well I have disabled it so now. you can see your mothership is here so this way you can create templ templates in your sectors and then just copy them and use them as you want and also when you will be creating uh, multiplayer maps you might want to add respawn points which are here in dummy point and here just set its respawn point and here there is a faction for each team so when the player will be Omnicorp for example all the players from the Omnicorp team will spawn in one of the dummy points you set here so that's all for now I hope you like this tutorial and it will help you in creating your awesome sectors you can share them on our website mindwars.com and goodbye see you next time